now, the Bram Weinstein Show on Washington's new home for sports, ESPN 630. Hey, babies. Hey, babies. Hey, babies. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. What's up? What's going on? <laughs> Tuesday. I was going to start with all the commander stuff, but I think we should just do breaking news here to start because we have a change in the NBA. Yep. The Bucks have fired their first-year head coach, Adrian Griffin, like moments ago. Mm-hmm. And all the reports are fast and furious that Doc Rivers is going to get that job. He's the quote-unquote top candidate. Tell the whole story! Do you see where they are in the standings, by the way? I'm looking it up right now. They're probably, what, second in the East? Yeah. 30 and so, 13. So what... What is that about? What do Giannis... 30 and 13. What do Giannis and or Dame and or Chris Middleton all hate about him because that's the only thing I can think about that he is just not not jiving their cup them. of tea, I guess. But they're just, it's the NBA, and when you have two megastars, you win most of your games anyway. Sure, but 30 This 13, is like proof like you don't need a coach. <laughs> if you have players like of that level, right. you almost don't need one. Like 30 and 13, though. 30 and 13? Pretty strong. Wait, they're not having a down year. Someone would they're have- on pace. For a 60-win season, we haven't had one of those since ever? we had a good year in 78. Ever. Right, probably not. I don't think that they have ever won 60 games. This is, I mean, like, it's so funny. We're in such a weird world. The Eagles and Cowboys are talking about firing coaches that have had back-to-back years with double-digit wins, winning divisions, and one of them got to a Super Bowl, and the other ones won 12 wins three years in a row and won the division this year. We're talking about they should fire their guys. We'd die for one of those seasons, the way things are going on right now. Yeah, but it's We'd throw a parade for our coach if they had 12 wins. It's the, <laughs> way, the, season. It's the way, not so much McCarthy, but more Sirianni. It's the way that it's gone. Like, there's a difference. Yeah, it's in, disintegrated. Right. On McCarthy, it was one really bad game. Correct. That's it, really. And, and Sirianni. I mean, realistically, that's what it is. It's one really bad, surprising, they didn't think they would lose that game. And if they lost, they certainly didn't think they'd lose the way they did. Right. The Eagles, it was... We know you're going to lose to whoever you play in the playoffs because you guys are so messed up. And then they played an average 500 team and got blown out. Uh, but Sir- we knew it was going to happen. And Sirianni, too, it's basically like, oh, life got hard, and that's how you reacted as a leader. Right. Like, it was everything is great. You were fine as a head coach when things are great. But that's when right. things got hard, all of a sudden... Well, I think what you find. I mind. said this about Sala with the Jets. I'm like, I don't know if he's a good coach or not because when things got hard, they went sideways. Right. So, is that because Zach Wilson's not very good? All right. Is that because they just couldn't circle the wagons? Like Rodgers actually tried with them to be like, yeah, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Like keep the mojo going. Like I'll come back. I'll come back. And it didn't help them. Right. Uh, so, Wizard, Wizards, by the way, did win 60 games one time. When? 1974-1975. They lost in the finals that year. They lost in the finals. And then a few years later, they won their one championship. Which they actually only won 44 games that year. Funny enough. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. But they had Hall of Famers yeah, on yeah, their team yeah. you know, at the time. Right. Um, we haven't had that in a while. We haven't had many Hall <laughs> of Famers. What are those? I don't know what those are. Let me see. If I, who have we had on our team that's a Hall of Famer since, that, since Wes and Big E? Um, Who have we had on our uh, team? The Gilbert was trending that way. It won't happen. John Wall, is he a Hall of Famer? Do you want to see? Do you think John Wall's a Hall of Famer? Do you want to guess who basketball reference has as the all-time top 12 players? For the Wizards? Yeah, yeah. So Let you, me guess you, so, so, okay. Wes and Big E are one and two. One and two. Right. Uh, we had Earl the Pearl Monroe on this team. He is number, So he's got to be on that list. He's not in the top 12. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, Moses Malone played on our team. Uh, not in a wi- I think these are based on a Wizards uniform. Uh, he's not in there either. He played on our team, though. Well, yeah, no, but I think Bernard this- King played on our team. Is he one of the top players? Uh, they don't have him on the list? This list is, is flawed. No, no, no. I, th- I think what this is is it's in a Wizards uniform, Wizards Bullets uniform. A Wizards. Wizards or Bullets uniform. Yeah, but I'm telling you, Moses Malone played for us. He's a Hall of Fame player. How's he not on that list? I mean, I know he didn't play the majority of his career here, but that's, Moses that's, Malone played here. That's what I'm telling like, you. I think it's in a Wizards uniform. So it's one Wes, two Hayes, three is Walt Bellamy. Okay. Four, Brad. So they're saying what? Like the, the majority of your career came in, here? Is that a, what you're in, saying? Yes, yes, exactly. Because yeah, I will put aside the guy who showed up for one year. Well, who else then? Karan? Uh, Greg Ballard's five. Wall is six. Arenas is seven. Antoine Jameson is eight. Jack Marin is nine. 
Phil is 10. Yeah. Gus Johnson's 11. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Brendan Haywood is number 12. Okay, this is a flawed, li- <laughs> this is flawed list, though. That's flawed list. Because Moses Malone played on this team. Moses Malone is a you, Hall of Fame. I tell you, it's in, I, I think it's in Bernard the Bernard King played on this team. Not for like five minutes. He played on this team. He's a Hall of Fame player. Like, what are we talking about here? I think it's, I think it's just based I, if on Buck the If Buck is listening to this, he's throwing things up in the air going, <laughs> what are you talking about? Because I, that flawed list, flawed list. All right, anyway, back to the Bucks. 30 and 13 fired their coach because they don't feel like they're there there, I guess. And... They just fired Budenholzer, who they'd won a championship with. Right. And last year, because Giannis got hurt, mm-hmm. they got eliminated early. For, I mean, to be fair to them. I mean, that's why. I mean, they might have lost anyway, but they had no shot once Giannis was down. I mean, that's any good team. If Jason Tatum gets hurt, Boston's season will end. They won't win. Like, they won't. Like, so how do you blame them for last year when Giannis got hurt in the playoffs? Like, if you if Embiid gets hurt, the 76ers will go nowhere. <laughs> like, right. come on. Like, what are we doing here? Didn't last year, though, didn't they let Boston fight back in that series, if I'm not mistaken? Like, weren't they up? Milwaukee? Yeah. They lost to the Heat in the first round. Oh, that's right. That's because right. They, yeah, because yeah. Giannis got hurt. That's right. Yeah, yeah, he got, He took a charge or something. He, he got hurt. He missed a game or two. He wasn't the same. Yeah. And then the Heat beat. Them. So? Right. And and then they it came out that like wasn't Budenholzer like dealing with some kind of family thing like someone died or something in his family it like came out after the fact that, that he I was co- he was coaching anyway I mean whatever I mean the NBA coaches are semi disposable they they treat them that way which has happened here I don't know whether this guy's a good coach or not but to be fired at thirty and thirteen what. what? What are we talking about? Yeah, the only know. team ahead of them is Boston, and everyone projects them to be the best team in the East. It's not right. like they're they're not underachieving. This guy's got to be like, what? He must have been shocked. This this screams he he probably is not a good communicator or something. Yes, because or just and once the players say we want another voice, that's it. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. And so they can't bring Bud back no. because come on. <laughs> so Doc, of course, is raising his hand, going, "I'll take you over the top." Yeah, of course. So. Now that it's their two and Philly's three, wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, I mean, wouldn't I, that be if fun? They met in, especially if they met in the playoffs. Yeah, met be, in the pl- well, that's what it's right. That's where it's heading. Right, they'd play them in the semifinals. That's what it would be right now. Bucks, 76ers, semifinals right, right. now. Right, things could change, but I don't think much. Like the Bucks are the Bucks have proven here they clearly are underachieving at thirty and thirteen. So are they going to get worse with a new voice? Probably not. Not without an injury to, right. to one of their top two or three guys. It's not happening. So they're going to be probably the number two team. And the Sixers are probably going to be the number three. I mean, the teams behind them, I guess Miami making that trade today helps them for sure. New York, I think, is what they are. Like they're a middle of the road East team that's going to be a tough out, but won't go far enough because they're not as good as Boston, Milwaukee or Philadelphia or Maybe Cleveland or maybe Miami, frankly. Like they're a they are a respectable for they haven't been for a long time. They're a respectable team now, but they're not good enough to go far, far. Right. And Cleveland, I think, is is similar. Like they're good, but they're not good enough. Like, could they win one of these series? Sure. If they get in the if they somehow get to the East Conference semifinals and they play Boston, who's picking them? Nobody. Right. Yeah, nobody nobody's is. picking them. Yeah, nobody's picking them. Right? Oh man. That I I mean, we'll find out like they'll they'll find out what happened here. But clearly this is they're not underachieving. It's not like they're seventh in the standings like that doesn't even make any sense. Like they're they're in second place at 30 and 13. Come on. Like this league, though, more than any other league, when something's wonky. The change. happens. Right. It's this league more than any other one. It doesn't even matter what your record is. Clearly, when the players right. are out on you. You have to make the change. It's, it's a player's league, too. Right. If they, if Giannis and Dame go to the owner and say, right. or the GM or whoever, and say, we're, we're, this ain't working with this guy, we're not going to get there, uh, well, then you have to make the move. Yes. I mean, they went all in to get Dame. They Well, they re-signed Giannis. It's not like other way these guys are going They only anywhere. signed Giannis, though, after they traded for Dame. Correct, because he, he put their feet to the fire right. and said, go get me a running mate. And right. they did. And they went and did it. I mean, like, plenty of times we've heard of people say, go do that, and it never actually happens. They went and did it. Right. So he goes back, and maybe Mallory did this. Maybe Mallory. Maybe. <laughs> uh, I guess somebody did say that uh, in December, 
this past December, Stephen A. said on first take, Giannis doesn't like Adrian Griffin. Okay, so, well, and he would know. I mean, this so is the one thing, go. like, when, when, <laughs> when Stephen A. spouts off about everything, but when he's talking about the, the NBA, NBA yeah. he actually it's, knows. It's got weight behind it, yeah. Yes, because he talks to the players yeah. and the coaches. They talk to him. So that, was, uh, that tweet came from... Uh, around Christmas time. So it means they let it go for another month is pretty much what happened there. After Stephen A knew about it, which means it probably is like two or three months old at that point. Let me look at the recent games real quick with them just to see. Uh, they have won five of six. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the last two are against both against Detroit. So okay, whatever. All right. Okay. Then they lost, they lost to Cleveland. So they won that crazy game against Sacramento that was one point in overtime, 143-142. They beat Golden State. They beat Boston. And they fired the guy. They beat Boston, Golden State, Sacramento, and then won, won five of six, and they fired the guy anyway. Right. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. Giannis, they were winning in spite of Giannis hating him. That's actually pretty good. That is pretty good. Well, yeah. They like, won 30 games doing that. When you have supernovas on your team, you, you won't lose enough <laughs> to warrant having a real conversation about it, which is why we haven't had people like that. It tells me he's a crappy communicator. That's what that I is. I guess. All right, so Doc's like, pick me, pick me, pick me. <laughs> and this is, at ESPN, probably knew this going in. Yeah. They made the change, mm-hmm. took out Van Gundy and Jackson. That team works, right. has worked. They bring in Doc Rivers, and he's already half of a yeah. season <laughs> walking out the door on right. them. Yeah. I think they probably thought they'd get at least one full season when he didn't get hired in the cycle. Well, he probably they probably thought that he probably also wasn't going to take just any gig. But when the That's Giannis true. and right, Dame right. team comes up, you're like, "Sorry, guys." Right, and Doc. <laughs> let's see. Doc's had well, he won with Boston. Mm-hmm. Right. He's won the one with the the anything is possible team. Yes, yeah, yeah, he was, was the coach of that KG, team. KG Pearson, right? Uh, Ray Allen. The yeah. uh, magic stuff where he was close is the tell the whole story yeah. stuff. <laughs> That's the tell the whole story thing. And then you know, recent years was Philadelphia, and it just he couldn't get over the top with them. Right. And you I to, think there was a lot of reasons for that. Like the Ben Simmons stuff slowed them down with, for a couple years, but then they got hardened. And last year, that I mean. You kind of got to win with that. I with, mean, like, I, I mean, I know, are they as good as some of these other teams? No, but like, maybe, but they're marginally worse than the other teams, and they didn't win with it. So, with uh, I think you said Magic Clippers, you mean? Uh, the Clippers, yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, he was with the Magic originally. Oh, originally, years originally. Years ago. yeah, you're right, you're right. But, you know, but the, Clippers the Clippers was Lob City, yeah, right. But with and the they Clip- never won with it. But with the Clippers, I will make the argument that was when he had to, they like Golden State was first starting out, and they were just taking dudes out and left and right. Also, <laughs> not unlike Ron, he dealt with Donald Sterling. Yeah, right, exactly. Exactly. Remember yep, right. when that stuff came out <laughs> about Donald that Sterling was, during the playoffs. was in the playoffs <laughs> yeah. when that happened. Right. And they and remember the players openly discussed not playing. Yep. Right. Exactly. So they had to convince them to play. And then their move was they turned their jerseys inside out or their warm ups inside yeah, yeah, out yeah. to say right. we're playing, but we don't support the organization guy, at yeah. this point. Right. So, but we'd like to win a championship anyway. It also was, does. And that's like. You ain't getting over that. I'm right. sorry. Like, like when that came out, I'll never forget when that came out. That was incredible when that came out. So he's had, I, I, I guess he's, they're looking at him as a closer. Pretty much. He's going to come yeah. in and fix it. And I now I hope we get Milwaukee, Philadelphia in the playoffs because that's a that's a heck of a storyline if we get it. Well, it's also if if you're the owner of the Bucks too, making that decision, you're like, we won 30 games and they hate this dude. Yeah. What's going to happen when I bring in someone that's a veteran coach, knows how to communicate with a couple of superstars, will start yeah. writing the ship. He's probably thinking this should get us over. Like that, this should make us way better. I mean, you know, I, I listen, I think the Donald Sterling year was terrible for them. But like those Lob City years, that was among the most exciting teams to ever play in the NBA. Right. That never got over the top. Like yeah. they were <laughs> they were incredible to watch. Incre- literally incredible. It's like Blake Griffin prime before he got hurt with the knee stuff. Chris Paul, prime. Like, they were incredible to watch. Yeah, right. All right. Go ahead, Milwaukee. Do what you do. <laughs> go for it. People are getting squirrely. <laughs> How about that? They're getting real squirrely. Miami made a trade today. They got, I love Terry Rozier. I think he's really good. And so you, you get a killer like that. You put him on a killer organization. Now they've got a shooter again. So I think he helps them significantly. They also got out of, uh, who did they trade? Kyle Lowry. They got yep. out of that contract. Yeah. So they just got out of that. Lowry's going to end up on a contender too. watch. Like somewhere as a backup, probably somebody, somewhere. Somebody, somebody's already saying, can Toronto get him back somehow? Lowry, like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess, but like they're not. You know, they're trading off parts. So yeah, yeah. like they just traded off their two best players. So like they're not in a position to really contend at this point. So why would they bring back an old guy who makes forty million a year? They're not going to do that. So he's he's going to end up 
on the bench on a good team, like, let, let's try to figure that one out. Yeah. Who's that going to be, right? Like, somebody will get him because Charlotte's not going to keep him. Like, they, they, they did what, what we did where we got CP3, but we were never intending to keep him. And we flipped him somewhere else. He screams yeah. like Lakers. That's one that, like, would yeah. satisfy their fans. Maybe. Because like, yeah. they, they freak out. I think out. they need a person person. Right, like, right, they're talking they, about real, like, right, but, young you know, you know, They're talking about like Dejounte Murray, you know, how Trey fans Young. Are, if the Hawks just go, forget it. You, you know, know how Lakers fans are though. They're gonna be like, they're gonna be like, uh, you know, they're like Lowry. We got him too. Now we're gonna be awesome, even though we know he's not the same no, player no, he was not eight years ago. He's not. All right, so they do that, and that I didn't talk about this yesterday very much, uh, but Shams is out there saying the Wizards. Not that this is a surprise, but okay. like everybody but Bilal come at us. Good, and and he said everybody. So. Like, let's think about that for a second. They did it. I mean, Kuzma was always a trade bargain chip. Like, I, I love yeah. Kuz. I told you the like, second he signed that deal. They didn't sign him to sign him. They signed him to move him. They saw, Yeah, they signed, they'll hang on to him if things are going well, and he's a good player and clearly a good soldier. Like, yep. he's handled all of this for the last past couple of years. But, yeah, I agree with you. Like, they just, like, he's a trade chip at a later and, date. And they signed him at a good salary. Like, it's not like they overpaid like crazy. It was a very reasonable for a guy like his, you know, stature, it wasn't like they overpaid for him. So, I mean, did they do this today because Miami made a move and it spooked them a little bit, Milwaukee? Because they lost so. to them, so. and they're, they're already seeing people get squirrely and start to make the move, so they did it earlier, sooner rather than later. I don't think so. I think this, it, the fact that, that that tweet came up and it was around Christmas time, it tells you this wasn't like overnight. Mm. So, for the Wizards. I, what I found interesting about the report was not that I'm surprised about Bilal. We're not trading Bilal. Yeah, of course like not. that's that's that our, been the bright spot of the season, <laughs> right? And that's the guy. Like that's the guy they're going to start the build around. Um, Pool we know they got because, well, he was offered to us Correct. Yeah. for a 40 year old player, yeah. and he can play. Right. So, can they move him now? Probably not for much. Right? Would they? I think for the right deal. Sure. I think you might see someone try yeah. to just salary swap it. Like, yeah. can you get two players? Well, if you're gonna give me some, if you're gonna give me somebody on an expiring contract, yeah. then I think we would talk because right, he's not right. the future here, obviously. But it would have to be the right thing yes. for sure. Like, what do the Lakers think of him? Uh, what do the Lakers think of him? It's a good question. I send us doubt. Rui back. Send us Rui back. God, for uh, two second round picks in 2044 <laughs> yeah, and 2068. 2068. <laughs> Protected. Yeah, protected, protected second round, second round picks. pick 2068. <laughs> when in 2068, there may not even be a second round. <laughs> That's right. You don't know. You can defer your second round. Everybody picks, just then. get rid of it. You can defer them. So, all right. But here's the, where the interesting part I thought was when he said, and I believe it, like everybody's on the block. That includes Denny. Yeah, right. Who they resigned. Right. That includes Kispert, who's actually, I mean, I'm not paying a, the type of attention I normally would to them because yeah. I think we all know what the score is here and they're just such an utter wreck. It's like, call me when you guys have a competitive team again. Right, right. But in the times I have watched, like he's actually come on mm -hmm. and become a solid, what we thought he would be three point dead eye shooter. Yeah. So he's on the block. Like I actually think there might be a contender that looks at someone like him and sees some level of value, not a high amount of value. Kuzma is going to get a return. Like, they're saying that it's hot and heavy with Dallas, apparently. Hot and heavy. Like, Kuzma's the best trade chip of all of them. Correct. He's been professional. He's been on a winner. He goes with the flow. He does not demand to be the star. He never acts that way. Yep. Like, so, I think he's a he's a pro. He's a, he's a, I've said this a lot. He's a really good player on a really good team. Like, a really good player on a really good team. Like, he's Robert Ory. Like, he's a really good player. Well, you put him on it because he will not, if you send him back to the Lakers, he's not going to be like, I'm better than LeBron. Like, he's yeah, not that right, guy. Right. Like, he, he'll be like, tell me what to do, and he'll be a boon for a team like that. So they're going to get a real return for him. The Dallas stuff seems real. And honestly, if they're going to trade off two first-round picks for him, I'm taking that. Yeah, of course. I'm taking that because they clearly are going right now. What happens next year if Kyrie goes, you know, berserker and doesn't like being there, whatever well, it is, and then they float and fall the wrong way again? Like, I'll take that bet with Dallas. I do think that report came down as well because first-round picks are seemingly back in play now. Like, it seems like everyone let the market settle last year, and yeah. second-round picks were the going rate for guys, you know, because they of the superstars not being traded, essentially. And this year, it seems the first-round picks are back in play. And that's when you're the Wizards, you go, we are officially now back open for business because we will take any of your first-round picks. Yes. 
Because I think that that's what happened last year. Well, this th- is what we need to do, actually. If they're going to give us two first round picks, I am taking them for this. That's what I'm saying. Last year, I want to know what I don't. Know, I want to know what salary we have to take back, but I want anything that's expiring. Right. That's, that's what okay. I'm saying. From last year, nobody was moving first. For some reason, last year the market, everyone held on the market last year and wasn't moving any first round picks. Like I think yeah. they would have traded Kuz last year, but they were probably saying, if you're not giving us a first, we're just going to try to resign them and then trade them for a first anyways down the line. For some reason, last year, the market was weird. The interesting part of just in hearing him say everything's up except for Bilal. Okay. And obviously you're not going to trade everybody because what's yeah. the market for Denny? It can't be particularly high. Like I think Kispert has come along in a way that a contender might look at him and they not give up anything great in capital, but right. might look at him and go, okay. So this is what I would say back to Winger and company. You, you can't trade it everybody sure. because you are in the lottery you are going to have hopefully a really high pick maybe you get lucky all right so it's not when Benyama this time but you should get something like top two or three pick when that person comes in here he has to land at a team that can kind of compete and people like Kuzma potentially pool Denny to a certain degree Kispert to a certain degree they're professional basketball players like you could start this process but so I I just I guess I don't know what they're where they are. Like I still subscribe to. They never intended to get Jordan Poole. That's just what worked out. Like that's how it played out. And I don't blame them for making the trade, but that wasn't the plan. The plan was to move Brad for as many assets as they could get to get the salary cap flexibility and get whatever they could get back that wouldn't hinder them moving forward. Yeah. To do so because he demanded where he went. They had to take CP3, of which they were going to flip. Because they got CP3, they flipped them, and they got a better asset back than I think that they ever intended to get. So the re- re- the real rebuild is going to be moving him somewhere. But he also has to act like a professional and look like the guy in Golden State. And that hasn't really happened with yeah, him here. Right. So can they move him for anything valuable, or have they by circumstance, landed in a spot where they aren't as flexible as maybe they would have hoped to have been at this point. Right. Right? So, I, I mean, because I want to hear, like, is the whole thing, are we just, are we looking at this and we're Oklahoma City where we're just going to assets, 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 and whenever we get SGA, Holmgren, mm-hmm. then we'll start to look towards the future. Are we just basically going, we'll take anything, move everybody until we get to that point at an undetermined date, which I guess is where we are and what's happening. Well, I think you have to look at what's quote unquote open for business. Who's a legitimate player? Poole could be a legitimate player. No doubt he could be. A contender looks at at, um, Denny and goes, that's our defender right there. That puts a team over the top. The question is, what are you getting for him that makes it worthwhile? Like If you're getting a second round pick for him. Well, then why are you moving away from he's a professional player? I don't think he's a star, but he's a professional player. You can't just get rid of everybody just to get rid of every is my right. point. All it takes all it takes is two teams though to all of a sudden want him and all of a sudden you're gonna get the first round pick out of him. Same thing with For Kiss- Denny? I mean, maybe. I don't know. I'm just He's, he screams a guy that if, they if you're going to go give run. me a first round pick for him, then I'm going to seriously consider it. Same thing with Kispert. I'll right. seriously consider it. But my point is, at some point, you have to have professional. Like you can't just replace everybody constantly with no plan of what the build is around it, unless you think Bilal is a supernova. Which I, I'm not there. Like I like I agree. I think he's a really good prospect. I agree. He's untouchable. I agree. He's a building block. He's 19 or whatever he is. I'm all for all that. But there's got to be a like a support system around him for him to actually excel and be better because he's not Giannis. Yeah, but the, the, I think like, this, that's not what. But he this is. is what this team has run into the last few years is when you have younger guys like that, they all still want to get paid. They still want their contract. I'm not. I'm not advocating to trade everybody, but I'm right. saying not everyone's pulling and, on the same rope at that. And point. they're not going to do that. And, and, they're and, just opening the door for we're open to all and, conversations minus the young first round pick. That right. We have. And to your point, who says they can't sign veterans in the off season to surround a team like that's prof- quote unquote professional? I'm just saying. I knew guys. this year would be weird, especially after they got pulled. Yeah. And I went, okay, that clearly was not the plan. Right. So what's the plan now? Because remember, where, where I landed on two guns after a while was <laughs> the plan constantly changed. Correct. I'm going to do this. Well, now I'm doing this. Well, that didn't work, so now I'm doing this. Mm-hmm. And they went from having 
all these players off of this trade that should have turned their franchise around to not having any of them and getting people like Porzingis because he was available. But that's not what they intended or tried to do. There was no vision or plan to it. It was just, well, this isn't working, so let's do this one now. Well, that's not working. Let's do this one now. Yep. And it got out of control. I don't want to put that on Winger yet, but I'd like to see what the vision and plan is. I knew this year would be bad. We all knew it would be bad. But what is the – what's – What's the baseline here? Okay, but, but Where are we going? In any sport, though, when the GM comes in and it's all talent he hasn't drafted, we all know how this goes. Right. So, But the, the pool one, unintentionally, sure. feels like the Porzingis one. They never intended to acquire someone like that. They just happened to do it because of circumstances. Right. The pool one's the same thing. There was no way that was part of the plan going into it. It's just, wait a minute, you're offering us him for CP3? Okay, I guess we just have to take it because it's too good of a deal not to. Yeah, the risk but it's reward not was worth part it. of the vision. Sure, but the right. risk-reward there was worth it. I, no I, I no one thought so. he would be a joke of, of, a, of a, shell, a shell of himself, I, basically. But I think eventually he will come around to, I need to... You would hope so. Yeah. Thanks, it, Brad, because, for saying Wizards bro. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, not that anyone would ever say this to him, but it's kind of like, dude... They always say this to the football players. Put your best film out there. Yeah. If not for us, but for other people. You keep doing crazy stuff. We actually can't send you to wherever you're thinking about right, going. Right. Exactly. Because yeah. they don't trust you. Yeah. Also, <laughs> no offense, and I know you're saying professionals and everything. They've won seven effing games. Who because deserves they don't have a good team? <laughs> right. So, if they're open like, for business, what does it matter? They're a if mass- they're trading I mean, they're guys? a massively <laughs> fl- flawed roster. They have no front court. And they, it's a massively flawed roster. All, all like, things, how are you going to win games in the NBA with no front court? Right, I was going to say, yeah. all the guys we're talking about, uh, Denny can defend one guy, can't defend all five. Yeah. Uh, Kispert can't sink all the threes in Correct. the game. So, so I'm just right. saying, like, they're probably also going, yeah. we are so bad, we'll move anybody because we can just sign veterans That's anyways. True. So I, I'm just saying, all right, it's well, not like they're 500 here and they're open for business. Let's see how it goes, guys. Let's see how it goes. All right, I'll get into breaking it. NFL news in the update for you. Buddy. Oh, yeah. All right, we'll listen to that and we'll react to it next. <laughs> Brave Watch the Show, ESPN 630 Sports Capital. Damn. All right, let's go through uh, all the NFL news today that's happening. Uh, Tom Telesco was hired as the GM of the Raiders. He was formerly with the Chargers. Yep. I uh, I subscribe to that's a pretty decent team that they've had that underachieved. Uh, many believe out there that's because of the coach. Right. But the GM was thrown under the bus anyway. I think there were holes like any other roster, but they had a uh, offensive skill set of players that were like a basketball team. They have a quarterback who obviously can play. Their offensive line was all right. Their running backs were definitively good enough. They had a couple of crazy playmakers on defense. Their ends and Derwin James. They had high pick corners. And yet they couldn't win very much. <laughs> so probably the coach, to me, more than the GM. That said, um, what the Raiders have done is the classic, they did it backwards. They elevated and hired a coach and then told a GM, you have to work with that coach, which is, you know, not typically the best way to go about these things. But that team decided it, Antonio Pierce was the right person for them, no matter who the GM was. So yeah. whoever the GM's were that were interviewing knew that to be the case and Telesco probably didn't have better options wants to remain a GM so he goes there I don't know that I love their roster as much as I liked the Chargers they like a lot of teams don't have a quarterback so they've got to go try to do something about that Uh, but outside of that you know all right good luck out there with all that it is worth saying he's the one that did pick Herbert so he gets credit for that, especially when Herbert was definitively what the third. He was the, he third, was the quarterback. third quarterback taken, and people still even mm-hmm. were kind of questioning it when it happened. And then he played one game, and everyone kind of knew. Mm-hmm. Uh, it also is worth mentioning he's watched the Raiders twice a year, okay. so he knows what he's jumping into as well. And if he's also saying or you know experiencing, you hired the coach already. I'm just going to do what I normally do and get the personnel in here. Maybe that's not the worst thing in the world for him because he clearly dealt with it under um, who was who was their coach, their last coach. Why well, his name is escaping? Staley. Staley. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's probably just saying, "I'm going to give his name me- hasn't been circulated yeah, that's very right. much." Well, if you may have noticed, well, the reports were he didn't know how to communicate with his players. Right. So he's probably also just saying, "I draft really well. If that's your coach, that's your coach. I'll I'll still add players to the roster." So Carolina's first move was an internal hiring. They elevated a longtime great player in the organization, Dan Morgan. Yeah. To be, their, to be their general manager. Um, 
I think this this one is a classic because we've lived this. Yep. I don't want to be dismissive of him because I think it's unfair. I don't know how he works. But this is going to read like you just got the owner's yes man Correct. to take over the it's job. The first thing I thought of. <laughs> which, you know, for us, if, if let's just say you really want Ben Johnson to be the head coach here. And I still think he's the number one candidate here. Uh, Washington, it has been reported, is going to literally travel to Detroit next week to meet with Ben Johnson and Aaron Glenn. I think we all know. I mean, the reporting is like Ben Johnson knows who his offensive coordinator will be. Like oh, stuff like okay. that is going on. And I'm not surprised by this. Like this is this was the right. number one candidate. I do believe I'm with Kaim on this, and the people I've talked to with the team, they are more open minded to who they want to yeah. be the head coach. And this is I've talked about this a lot. This is a there's an array of candidates that are very strong this year. It's a little different than other years. There's a wide wide spectrum of really really top tier candidates this year. I think more so than in previous years. So I, I think they should be open minded and talk to a lot of these people and find out who is the right person. But um, they haven't made a move yet, so they're clearly waiting out to have the in-person interview with who I believe is their top candidate, yep. and they're going to do that. I bring this up because if Ben Johnson, who's being sought after by a number of teams, one of them being Carolina, if he looks at that situation, and he better love Dan Morgan, because what he's walking into, at least perceptually, looks like the owner put the guy who's going to do exactly what the owner bids to do, no matter mm -hmm. what, Right. in the position of making the decisions, that's not a good spot to be. Right. Now, Dan Morgan might be a really good GM, and he may be empowered to be the GM, but it doesn't read that way when you internally hire off of the worst team in the NFL, that you're not looking for an outside point of view. You want somebody internally to continue to project your vision and pretend like it's different. And so, perceptually, this is not good. So the Carolina fan, this is not good. So if you want Ben Johnson, who has, if you're Carolina, you want him. You think he's the right guy. Well, guess what? Like, yeah. your situation is not going to look as, I think, attractive as somewhere else because of this. Well, yeah, because you walk in and it's already two versus one, and the right. other one is the freaking owner. So, right. <laughs> like, you're already powerless. <laughs> Correct. Also, Correct. I'm going to guess they probably discussed an initial plan. Like, they want to, you know, wide receiver to add to their roster because they traded their number one last year. Yeah. I bet you that's all the plan go. You know you know what I mean? Like the plan probably isn't that detailed. It's just going to constantly change once they do that in the draft or whatever. It so. was funny when we had the, when I did the quarterback club show and Steve Spurrier showed up because he was being honored yeah, and he right. went on the air and he told us that he was told Bobby Beathard was going to be the general manager, was <laughs> going to come right. out of retirement yeah, and be right. the general right. manager. And then he said, well, that didn't happen. And he goes, well, you know who they hired. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, right. That's the guy who the owner tells what to do. And I don't want to say that about Dan Morgan. That's not fair. You know, like, I think he's got a different level of experience than Vinny yes. really did. Correct. You know, yes, so yes. to be fair. But like that said, um, it reads similarly. So if you're a head coach, beware yep. what you're walking into. You are walking into a place where the owner is pretending that things are going to be different, but just installed an internal candidate who's been doing his bidding underneath the previous GM the whole time. Right. That's not a change. That's right. It's not a change. So, and this is my pitch to Ben Johnson, don't even bother. Right. Like if you if, if you put our two like everyone you say this about Washington, like look what you're walking into. You're walking into a hornet's nest. It's the reverse car wash. That Correct. Was, that was what it was by the end. Ben Johnson, you take that job, even if they offer you more money, good luck. Right. Because you're walking into a situation. I've seen this. We are in chapter four with Tepper, <laughs> and I've lived it. I know every chapter of this book. And he just did a predictable thing that these owners that want to be this involved but aren't good at it yet do and, and are also flippant and are willing to make changes very quickly if they don't go well for them and throw drinks at Jaguars fans. This is what happens. They install the people so that they project their vision continually, even though they're trying to pretend that someone else is making these choices. And for a first time head coach, no. Right. Like, they're not, the experienced head coaches are going, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. And the first time head coaches, well, you got to make a choice. Like, if this is what's offered to you and you get to be a head coach, do you risk it? Yeah, maybe. Sure. Yeah. Now, that said, through the years, you know, like Dan was able to hire major name coaches. I, every time when people say like he couldn't hire anybody, he hired Marty Schottenheimer, Steve Spurrier, Joe Gibbs, Mike Shanahan, and Ron Rivera. Give me a break. Come on, how could you forget Jim Zorn? Jim Zorn, Jay Gruden. <laughs> but like of the, you can't get a real guy. He got Marty Schottenheimer, Mike Shanahan, Joe Gibbs, and Ron Rivera. Yeah. 
to be the head coach of his team. Right. So he'll get interest. But if I'm someone like Jim Harbaugh, not that necessarily they'd be interested in him, but like if I'm him, I ain't going there. That's right. Yeah. Like you got to be kidding. Like you're going to you're going to undermine me. You hired me to fix it, but you're going to undermine me. I already know it. Right. Yeah. You, you, this is why Ron this is why I feel for him. Like the job was too big for him. The whole personnel stuff. He admits that now he should have made a change. We talked about that. But he felt like he had to insulate himself because he knew what the reputation was. That's right. He would get undermined by the other side of the building if he didn't have control of it. So he closed the circle and then he found out, boy, this is a lot of work. <laughs> Duh. And, oh, by the way, I haven't run a personnel department before, so shopping for the groceries is hard. Right. And, you know, he could have, would have, should have changed all of that along the way. He didn't do that, and it was his unraveling, really. Correct. But I understand why he wanted it that way. And uh, someone like Harbaugh is going to look at this and go, I'm not even taking an interview with you guys. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're going to undermine me before I ever show up? I'm the guy that wins everywhere. Why are you going to undermine me? Correct. Yeah. So, Ben Johnson, it's not even comparable. <laughs> You may you don't know what you don't know with Adam Peters as a GM, and you don't know what you don't know about Josh Harris as an owner, really. Sure. Okay. Sure. But I can tell you right now, the way it's laid out, you will have the authority you're told you're going to be given. Right. You won't at that other place, and understand that. And if there's a price on that, good luck with that. Well, it's also momentum too, though. Like Peters has already literally said he wouldn't just leave San Francisco for no reason or any right. job. He left it for here. Like Correct. The, like, that's what I'm getting at here. There's already momentum of that we're not Tepper and company down there. It's that we have this guy that was won all these awards that's or whatever, right. and he wanted to come here. That's the most important part. I think there's a reporting out there, too, that same thing with Quinn. Like, Quinn is interested in coming here. Like, there, it's not just one or two guys. It's it's everyone wants a piece of Washington that's now because right. they understand of what it is. Carolina could not be more further from the opposite no. at this point. This is like, for yeah. our purposes, this is a good development today. Yeah. On, if you really want Ben Johnson, this is a good development because his agent, if he's smart, is going to tell him, we'll talk to them because we yeah. want leverage. and We want to get the most money we can get. But buyer beware on that deal right. as your first time head coach going to a place like that where you could be undermined. And don't, don't believe them when they tell you they won't undermine you. Right. They will. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll talk about Bobby Slowick and the hiring in Tennessee next. Bring watch the show ESPN 630 Sports Capital. All right, uh, let's get into the other moves that are happening here. One, let's just start with Washington. Um, as I talked about last segment, it is reported that Washington's uh, brass will fly to Detroit next week. They mm-hmm. will meet with both Ben Johnson and Aaron Glenn. They are also going to meet with the two Ravens candidates, Anthony Weaver and Mike McDonald. I would assume that would be around here somewhere because they're in Baltimore. Right. So they're going to do that, but they are literally going to Detroit to meet with Johnson. And one of two things could be happening. They could be preparing for the Super Bowl. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, he's done for the season and they're just going to meet him. And I think it's also a symbol of we really want you. Well, it's also even if, it's a getting, symbol even, of if that. even if they're getting ready for the Super Bowl, it's two weeks. So that's right. Like it's not like they're interrupting this they're not really asking, tight. They're not asking him to do anything. That's right, right, right. And they're exactly. also like, I think it's a it's a nice sign of we expect you to win this week, and that's what we think of you, and therefore we're going to come to you. Right, exactly. It's a, it, like, it's, it's more than symbolic. It is a, we really, 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 really want you. Right. And, uh, you know, it's been that way, I think, from the get-go. I do think they've been open-minded about a lot of other options because there are good candidates out there, but I still think at this point he still remains far and away the number one candidate unless Mike McDonald surprises them, unless Bobby Slowick. Sure. surprises right. them. He's right. getting his second interview now because the Texan season just ended. So they're going to do that with him. For all the people who are wondering, like, what does the second interviews mean? Well, the Falcons just had two of them with Jim Harbaugh and Bill Belichick. They're not hiring both of them. Right. Exactly. So keep that in mind. Yeah, right. They're course. they're doing due diligence. This is what they're supposed to do. They want to meet these people. And frankly, I think, like, whether you pick this person or not, you should meet with these people because things change. That's right. Yes. Yes. What if things go wrong for the Texans next year and Bobby Slowick's looking for a job and whoever Ben Johnson brings in here gets a head coaching job somewhere else and you need an offensive coordinator? Guess what? You've already laid the groundwork of understanding who this person yeah, is. Right, exactly. Right? And not only on that, like like Kaima said, the last ownership group was, we have our guy, we're doing this just to do it. Whereas Ready, this, shoot, aim. Right, and this ownership group is going, we need to lay the groundwork here no matter what happens because maybe Ben Johnson, like, you never know. They could win the Super Bowl, and Ben Johnson has a change of heart and goes, you know what, I want to stay here you know, and run it back. You know, like, Maybe. do I think it's going to happen? No. No, but, I don't. But you don't know literally until these guys when, are ready to commit. When they're already reporting who he'd bring with him. No, I know. I know. But you it, know how it is. I know. Like, I know. But, like, he's 
if they go and win a Super Bowl, I would advocate you have to leave it. No, point. of course, no, no, yeah, I'm because with you. like there's you're not. It's a pinnacle. You've done something in a place that it's been impossible. Like you've got to go. But what I'm getting at here is like, this ownership group is preparing for all options that could possibly happen that's on the right. table. So yes, all right. So that is happening. All right. The other things that are out there. Um, I'm trying to figure out what's going on with the Falcons because they've brought in Belichick twice. Yep. They've brought in Harbaugh twice. Mm-hmm. They're now bringing Johnson in for yeah. a second one. That's a ru- like we didn't interview Belichick at a Harbaugh. Or at least I don't know that we interviewed Harbaugh. Yeah. That hasn't come out if they have done it or not. Like the B enemy one was very quiet. Not that it was a surprise that they interviewed him. They should. Like right. they should talk to him, you know, for a lot of reasons. One, he is a viable candidate. Two, he knows our roster. Yep. He knows what was happening. You right. want to talk to him about all the things that were going on here. But, like, I don't know that they've talked to Harbaugh, nor do I expect them to go in that direction. I never really did. The Falcons are really interesting. Like, what do they want here? I think they want Belichick. What's the holdup? Is Belichick waiting for something else to happen? Is that what's going on here, that we're waiting for some kind of surprise somewhere? Because I felt there's always going to be someone's lying in the weeds that you don't know about. And after Dallas went on, I went, uh-oh, it might be yeah, them. Right. Now with the Philly thing, I went, uh-oh, it might be them. Now that Buffalo went out, it's, uh-oh, it might be them. Sure. Somebody is, Doc Rivers just went to <laughs> Milwaukee because <laughs> all of a sudden a prime job popped up. There was always going to be 31 prime jobs, yeah. you know, outside of whoever wins wins. So I'm waiting to see because the Belichick thing seemed to be steamrolling. But it's not happening really fast. And you'd think that they'd want to secure him if they really want him. And it just hasn't happened yet, which reads to me more like Belichick is surveying his options. Correct. Yeah, here. I, I think he's waiting literally until the end of the season. Probably not the end of the season, but until this weekend to just see if someone else's job opens up. Like, he needs to make sure. I'm sure this- his people are already in touch with these people and they're just quiet about it. Probably. Probably, and also... See, Don Yee was, is his agent, mm-hmm. and he was Brady's agent. Brady's agent was notorious for being very quiet about everything. He's like, he's not Drew Rosenhaus. He's not the guy. He's not on yeah. TV. He keeps his business close to the vest. Schefter said there... Uh, Schefter was on with um, Unsportsman like this morning, and he said there was one team that has interviewed Belichick that didn't reveal it. That mm-hmm. And that's whatever Schefter knows. Like, I don't... Right. Schefter would have broken that, that if he knew, so I don't know which side that's coming from, but... There's at least one other team. There's a quote unquote mystery team out there that interviewed him. So right, and it's probably one that has not fired their coach yet. Maybe that's what I think. Maybe or, because all right. So like, like think about the ones that are out there. We're not doing it. Right. Uh, trust well, me. Just trust me on that. Right, We're not. Right. Okay. Carolina clearly is not going to get them. Like, there's no way. Sure. Not after hiring this GM. Right. There's, there's no chance. They're off the board. Falcons want them. We know this. Um, Tennessee just hired their guy. Yep. Vegas hired their guy. Dallas is sticking with their guy. Mm-hmm. I don't think Sirianni is going to be fired publicly tomorrow. Right. I think he's staying. I think yeah. they're going to pick coordinators for him. I believe Although that. Pointing that out for what, what Hembo said, uh, old Dougie P did that press conference, then got fired afterwards. So Char- <laughs> different, different scenario, though. Chargers haven't hired anybody yet. That's right. Right. Seattle hasn't hired anybody yeah. yet. They've been right. real quiet. Well, the Chargers have admitted they've talked to Harbaugh twice, and there's a lot of reports today saying that's happening. And that was always predictable. It yes. seemed like it was right. going that way. Seattle's been super quiet about all this. I earmarked Dan Quinn for them. But does Belichick, would Belichick work for John Schneider? Like, remember, John Schneider came out and said it used to be that Pete Carroll had a final say on everything. That's no longer the case. I do. Yeah. Does Belichick want to go to a place where that's the case? It doesn't read that way to right. me. So who is it? Who is secretly talking to him? Is it Buffalo? I don't think it's anyone secretly talking. I think he's just waiting for all the dust to settle because he also could do this move. Like, same thing. I'm just using an example here. I don't think it's going to happen. Let's say Ben Johnson says no here. Like, let's say he says no here, and all of a sudden Quinn goes to Seattle and Raheem Morris goes somewhere else. Like, let's just say this: the dust. I think we're hiring Mike McDonald or Raheem Morris before we would hire Belichick, oh, in my opinion. Well, let's just say the okay. dust settles. That's my opinion. Let's just say the dust settles, and all of a sudden we haven't interviewed him, and Bill calls you and goes, you guys have the second overall pick. I want to take a quarterback, that defense I can work with. I would like to interview with you guys. And then all of a sudden, that's him surveying the market of going, I kind of like your scenario, and he approaches you type deal. Like mm-hmm. I think I, this, this is what I'm getting at here is maybe he wants to wait to see what some of the other dominoes fall because the other jobs might open up or have kind of a more 
open stance to taking him in. So. I think the Falcons are basically like, what do you want? Correct. Yeah. And he's not bit yet. I still think that's why, why is it he bit? Yet? I still think that's why he has, why he didn't take the Cowboys job. Like I know they didn't fire McCarthy, but them doing round two Ben Johnson screams to me that they feel like they're not going to get Harbaugh. They might not get Belichick. Uh oh, maybe. Uh oh, I mean, and well, they want a premier candidate. They're signaling it. They well, want a it. premier candidate. You have to weigh it though. If you hire Belichick, he then becomes the most powerful man in the building, and you're probably offering him roster say. Whereas if you t- get Ben Johnson. You're probably like he's not, not getting that. You're gonna correct. hire a GM, You're not. so I'm sure like it's probably weighing on some of these guys too of going. We'd rather just go the traditional route and not give you that position. So and then he goes, well, I'm not coming there. Well, he might, but if no one gives him that position, then he has to kind of sure. go back to the drawing. I, I've been racking my brain. Who's the secret team here? And I've always thought there would be. Right. Like I always thought there would be a secret team that's yeah. like sitting there waiting and just waiting it out and see what happens. Yeah, and, if I mean, they, and if they get him to commit, they're just going to fire their coach and right. bring him in. The same thing with Schefter this morning too. He it's also, like what happened with the Cubs. Like they went and got the Brewers right, manager right, and right. surprisingly fired uh, David Ross, Ross, Ross yeah. because they had him. Yeah. Only because they had him. They weren't going to do it for just anybody. They just and that's why they did it. I have a feeling we got that coming here. I mean. I don't I I don't believe the rumors about Andy Reid, but frankly, it's a lot of them. I mean, frankly, yeah. if he did retire, I think Belichick walks in the door there. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. Knowing right. he's going to win a bunch of Super Bowls. Correct. Yes, exactly. The only other thing here, and Schefter brought up a great point, is Schefter said, "Well, Tom Brady was available, and only two teams were interested in Brady, and this is just the layout of the league right now." There's only two or three teams interested in Belichick, and maybe Belichick is just hoping his market heats up a little bit more with the teams that are playing this weekend. Could or be. someone makes a move because they haven't made it yet. But that was I thought that was a good point by Schefter. He was like, the greatest quarterback of all time was available, and only two teams even approached him, the Chargers and the Bucks, and he ends up going to the Bucks and winning a Super Bowl. So, you know. He's also saying this is just the lay of the land in the NFL now. Some of these owners could don't, be. don't trust a guy that comes from a whole other we, dynasty. You know, it might just be saturation of coverage, but there's been no out of left field move yet. Yeah, yeah, right. Nobody has done anything right. that's been like, whoa, we haven't Correct. had one of those yet. Correct. The Belichick one's going to be. Yeah. Harbaugh's going to the Chargers. I think we all kind of know that. Yeah, yeah. Right. I think we know this. Right. So there's no out of left field move yet. Belichick's going to be the out of left field move that I think is going to surprise people. I just can't quite. I haven't figured out who it is yet. That's think, what I'm trying to figure I out. I think it will end up being the Falcons, and they're going to give him full autonomy of the roster. And that's what's going to get him there. The holdup might be because Rich McKay is extremely, extremely respected. He's like their president. Right. It might That might be the holdup here. Could be. The other yeah. thing, the other thing, this as well, I think it's worth saying, using the same blueprint that Brady did. Brady went to the Bucks knowing full well that division was going to be you know, wide open, the NFC, way easier road to get to the Super Bowl. I can't see Belichick kind of like weighing the teams and just going, if I go to the NFC I, I, and I elevate a team, all I need to be is like the fourth best team and I'm in, I'm getting a home game. Like if he's staring at the AFC, he has to go through Baltimore, Kansas City, Buffalo, Cincinnati next year, mm-hmm. like minimum. I'm just naming four teams off the top of my head that will be Super Bowl contenders. He's probably saying to himself, I really don't want to go to the AFC because I need to go somewhere else where I can at least take a couple cracks at this thing. And the NFC is the way to do it because it's look at the NFC, San Fran. Who's after that? Like, that's the only kid, San Fran in the, in the line. I mean, I think the one that ought to think about doing it, but it's too late. They've just decided what they're doing is the Bears. I think they should. Yeah, they're going to regret. <laughs> I already see this is. I mean, I don't know whether this guy deserved it or not, but it feels like Green, they should have made this move. Greeny said they're gonna you're gonna look back on this one like typical Bears. They decided to stick with Eberflus when this whole pool was available and decided not to not go to after do it. any get of these the new, guys. They're getting the new quarterback. And, go get the new voice. That's what, and that, that's what he was saying. He that's, was like, that's how I felt. He, about he said it. he's an offensive mind or defensive mind. They should have just fired Eberflus to mm-hmm. throw him into the pool and then go yes. get one of those other guys. And here they are about to, make, about to make the most important See, decision in ten years. It's a big so, mistake. It yeah. is. It's a big mistake. Yeah.